Well, how do there, chums? Tis I, Captain of the Steves, and today, chums, I'm in No Man's Sky, and we're playing it like no fire, or like no fire. So yeah, we called it like no sky. And as you can see, I'm at my base at the moment, people. Now, behind these decals is a vault. So if you head on over to this, take a little while to actually interact with it, but there you go. It's labelled as treasure chest. Now, I am hoping that people can put any of their treasures inside of my vault, because I have given everybody access to build at my base that's part of my friends group. But if not, over here, there's some refiners. Now, I have given everybody access to access my refiners. So you could leave stuff into here, three there, and then I've got another three over here. Now, I have been doing some testing offline and online and offline things are not appearing they're not working as they should even though despite in network i have made it that anyone can use my refiners thank yes yeah and i've made it so anybody that's part of my group or friends can actually add to the base so as long as you're on my friends list you should be able to put things in my vault in theory doesn't seem to be working in practice. The only time it does work is if you're online and I'm online at the same time and you can come to my base. I mean, inside of my base right now, I do have one of my chums. Oh, he's gone. He was just here and he put a load of carbon inside of my nutrient processor. I tried to give him some meat back, but no, he's gone. So anyways, if I go into here, I'm just going to make myself some meat for my journey. Heck yes, people. So I killed a walker earlier, last episode or the episode before. So I'm just going to chuck that into there. And I'm going to make some processed meat before we go on our next excavation. Well, excursion, I should say, people. You're probably wondering, well, what excursion is that, Captain of the Steves? Well, um, I've come up with four challenges. Four. So the first challenge is to scan and discover every single creature upon this planet. As you can see here, I've got seven of the 11 done. Seven, 11, I guess. So I've got to go into the gnarly of the waters and scan all the underwater beasties. Once I've done that, I can claim all the nanites and I should get 2,750 nanites. Challenge two, people, is to get yourself a relic. So to find a treasure site, so I'm looking for an ancient relic, something like that. It could be on land or it could be underwater. Dig up the treasure and hopefully get something that's worth a shed load of units. The one that finds the most awesomest treasures wins, basically. Now, all of you guys can be get involved in this. Just get your fauna scanned. Go get your treasures. Bring your treasures to your leader so they can put it in their vault. Now, you might have to wait until your leader's online. So just keep checking to see when they appear. And when they do, get on over there as quick as you can. Heck yeah. Okay, so, challenge three, people. Okay, so challenge three is to get yourself some hazmat gauntlets created. As you can see, I haven't got the chromatic metal. I haven't got the sodium of the nitrates. I have got some sodium right there. And I have got some copper that I can turn into chromatic metal to get my hazmat gauntlets done. I've nearly got them. Yeah, once you've got your hazmat gauntlets, on this planet are three star items. Sack Venom. Go and pick as much Sack Venom as possible and go and screw all that away inside of your leader's vaults as the last challenge. Now, we're going to be running these four challenges until the end of May, mainly because different time zones, people sort of, you know, their commitment to gaming. You might not get a lot done, but yeah, go to town. Try and get as much Sack Venom as possible. Go dig up as many treasures as possible. The more treasures we get, the higher chance we have of winning. Plus, we're probably going to add up the the actual total of that treasure to find out which group has done the most treasure hunting. Yeah, I can't imagine there's that many relic sites on the planet. It'll be interesting to see. Ah, there we go. Yeah, hello, mate. How are you? Cool. There we go. That's, that's probably one of my guys. Now, the trouble is... is when you are actually doing these challenges, people, we're supposed to be putting our games into survival mode and turning on our PvP. That means we could be killed by any of these guys that are around. And I don't know who's in my team and who's not. <laughs> yeah, so this could be a fun one. So, yeah, I'm just going to have a look at networking. Let's just see how many players are online right now. Holy fudge. We've got all of these that are online nearby players list and i don't i know that this guy he's one of my super members but i don't know about the others sorry people but yeah there's a, there's a limited 
window of my fans and I know them actually by name, in-game name. You know, a lot of them hit me up on social media. I know their real names, not their in-game names. So this could be a fun one. Right now, running a mission and trying to scan all creatures or something could be fun. Oh, OK. Got a journey milestone there, people. That's pretty cool. Now, something that is quite cool, though, is I have got myself a flying creature now. Check this out. Gently pet. And ride. Look how fast this thing covers the ground, you know? Look, I can get to just damage machinery in seconds now, people. Hoppa chow! Jump off! There we go. And I've arrived, Kato, at some damaged machineries. Lovely! Heck yes, grab that living slime. So anyway, people, there you go. There's your challenges. So challenge one, scan all the fauna on the planet. Challenge two, make sure you claim your nanites. You've then got to find a relic site. Now, what I would suggest is you make yourself to the actual hub of this actual realm. And there is a teleporter that can teleport you up to the station. Once at the station, you can buy yourself some cartography maps. Those cartography maps you can use to find yourself a relic site. Go to the relic site, grab yourself some treasure, treasure, heck yes! Or you could find yourself like a colossal archive, and there they print relic maps, and that'll take you to a relic site, depending on what you want to do. But yeah, so there is that. Okay, right, and then after you've done that, the next challenge... Make yourself some hazmat gauntlets, and then until the end of May, get yourself a load of sack venom as well as treasure. Yeah, just keep doing relics and stuff like that. Oh, I've just built a chimney on top of my house. By the looks of things, this guy is taking in its wonder and going, oh, that's a lovely chimney. Yeah, I'll put this little thing behind it, sort of like to give a smoky, steamy effect. But yeah, pretty darn freaking lovely, that. I'm quite happy with that. And inside of my base now, you may have noticed, it's far better illuminated now as well, people. So if I head on in, I've got this little lamp here that's doing some illumination. This fireplace, and I've put like in a, a chimney stack that actually goes up to the chimney on the top. And I've put in another little fire thingy here on the counter, almost like a little candle or something. Yeah. Oh, where's my weapons rack gone on the wall? I put a weapons rack on this freaking wall, didn't I? Yeah. There you go, stick another one on there. Don't know what happened to that. Uh, there we go. It's back, dilly and back. Okay, cool. And I've also got a nutrient processor for making my meat. So here you go, I've got my meat. Now, the next episode will be me doing challenge one. Challenge one, scan all four. Now, as you can see, I've already got seven of the eleven. So we're going to go diving, people, which means I need to get on the back of my actual creature, fly over to a nice deep area of ocean or a lake or something, and go and scan all the creatures. That's what I'm going to be doing next episode. Be claiming all of my uh, nanites, heck yes, yeah, so hopefully that'll be cool. And then uh, what else have I got to do? I'll be moving on to challenge two, people inside the Viewerverse, which means a trek to the hub. I might even do that live, turning on my perma, well not perma, survival mode and PvP and seeing how I get on, people. Um, hopefully I won't get murdered on my way there. Okay, right. I'm thinking, do I need to fill out this little staircase underneath? Probably not. But yeah, you can try and drop stuff off in this large refiner. The only trouble is, if I'm not online, what I've seen so far is it just eats your products. You lose them. Yeah, uh, it looks like I have to be online. It looks like your leader has to be online when you drop the stuff off. So I don't know what we need to do there. Maybe we need to come up with some sort of uh, time slot. Maybe I need to put on my community tab on YouTube when I'm going to be online and how long for. I mean, luckily, I work from home most days of the week. I can just leave my PlayStation on and just leave myself sitting inside of my house. So that solves a problem for me. I don't know whether Professor Cynical and Ricey have got that same luxury, but hopefully they can. Because otherwise it's a little bit squiffy. And finding the vaults don't seem to work. So there is that, people. Heck yeah. Uh, I have made it slightly easier to get to the vaults. You can get to them from up here if you need to. The refiners or whatever. And this vault here, if you go over to this weapons rack, you can access it there. Look. Boom. Like that. Okay. Well, there we are, people, in the view of us. I've had a few people say to me, can I make life support gel or do I have to craft food products? Well, you can you can do this. I mean, look, I've just made some meat. It's going to give me 20% life support power. Go with what you like. I've also been picking up oxygen as I've been destroying hazardous flora out in the wilds. That's how I'm doing it for myself. I don't really mind how you want to play. 
The only thing I do have a little bit of a concern about is people jumping in and using their old items, their legacy items, having an OP multi-tool or having an exosuit that's full of tech that they've got from their legacy saves. If we are turning on PvP, that puts you at a massive advantage and that's kind of not great. We want everybody on the same base level. We don't want any super murderers inside of the game. So you know, try and abide by the rules when it comes to that sort of thing, people. I am also planning on doing an episode very soon, perhaps to the tail end of May, where I go around and look at everybody's bases that people have been building in and around inside of my faction. And basically, I'm, I'm going to be looking to see what people's interpretations are of the light no fire type stuff so if i was doing a tour of my own base i'd be like well this is all very much in keeping apart from maybe this little sort of steamy type unit but up here but i can see why it's been added to add a bit of a, a steamy type smoke effect it's a nice idea but it does look a little bit steampunk universe you know what i mean but it's well hidden so you know it's all great there's also like the multi-tool rack yeah okay fine it's got tube lights on the dang thing but you know the weapons of choice in this game are multi-tools. I've got to try and use my imagination rather than see multi-tools. I'm seeing axes there, swords and spears and stuff like that, you know? So it's a case of using a bit of imagination thrown in. It's a bit like the nutrient processor as well. I can see that there's an old rustic kitchen built around it, but the functionality has to be that thing, you know? So yeah, you know, if I was scoring my own base, I'd say it was good. It's a decent rendition of what we might see in Light No Fire with a few caveats thrown in, which is lovely. Well done, me. Heck yes. So that's the sort of base tools I'm going to be doing on your bases. So try to keep them as fatically pleasing to the eye as possible and in line with Light No Fire as possible. I mean, I'm not going to be reprimanding them or giving them scores or anything. I'm just going to be dashing out some drizzle drizzle when it comes to the freaking opinions of what's going on you know yeah that's that sort of stuff which right yeah uh right so did i upload my base i'm just gonna do that one more time before i exit out there we go upload base and i'll put down the challenges inside the video description along with all the rules but basically check out my community tab there you're going to see any rule changes any community type stuff any new missions that we come up with that sort of shenanigans now what i'm hoping to do in between now and the next episode is i'm just going to plant a few trees around my bush uh, around my base so i'm going to make these nice and large i've just been gifted a load of carbon so I'm going to make a nice little forest around my base right now, people. Heck yeah, because why not? There we are. Let's have that tree there as well. Coolio. Because you know what we don't have? We don't have many trees or anything like that inside of this planet. So there we are. And I've been using my terrain manipulator around here, so why not add a few flowers in too? Yeah. There we go. Anyway, I'm going to get to work on making my base look a bit pretty before I go out and scan those creatures. I'm just going to enjoy my weekend. I'm taking these challenges nice and slowly. It's just a good way of getting to see the planet as well as do something a bit functional and a bit fun. Till next time, people. Salute to Mondo. Goodbye, goodbye. And goodbye again. As explorer of YouTube and of No Man's Sky It goes by sunny 700 years Also know as Old Explorer Friends know him as Massive thank you from Captain Steve, so